Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we're in San Antonio at the annual meeting of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons and I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Gianluca Torregrossa, who is the Director of Robotic and Revascularization Surgery at Mainline Health in Wynwood, Pennsylvania. Dr. Torregrossa, it is great to see you again. Thank Thanks you for being so here today. Thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you for having me here and thank you for everything you guys are doing for patients and uh, creating this platform where patients and doctors can meet and where patients can find proper information about their heart valve disease. Yeah, and so let's talk about that. We're here at the conference, a lot of great meetings going on, presentations, and we're also getting patient questions while we're here. This one came in from Jeremy and he asks, I've been diagnosed with mitral valve disease and plaque buildup in my arteries. I've learned a lot about mitral valve surgery on your website. What should I know about coronary artery bypass grafts? Are they all the same? Great question, Jeremy, and an excellent, really, problem. So, in the process of any type of valve surgery, your surgeon will always try to do some tests to understand if the coronary arteries, if the pipes, the highway that brings blood and nutrition to the heart present plaque. When we discover that there is plaque present, it's very important to step back and understand that the 15 years outcomes of the surgery are most likely influenced by the coronary artery disease rather than the valve surgery. It means coronary artery disease takes almost the first position in the acuity and in the problem of the heart at that time. The positive news is that there is an excellent treatment for coronary artery disease and the best treatment that has been tested throughout the last 40, 50 years is coronary artery bypass grafting. What patients should know is that after the proper assessment of the presence of this plaque, the patients and the surgeon should understand where this problem is in the coronary artery trees and understand what is the best treatment for that plaque, for that obstruction. Most of the time, coronary artery bypass grafting is the solution for it. In certain situations, if the plaque is not in the main arteries, we can also consider a percutaneous coronary intervention or a stent. Dr. Torregrossa, fascinating. I've got to ask you a question. I'm sure Jeremy's wondering, other patients in our community, are there any innovations you're using in your practice to treat coronary artery disease? Great question. So every patient should know before getting into a bypass surgery or a combined valve and bypass surgery is what type of graft, what type of conduit my surgeon will use to bypass my lesion. What we have learned is that using multiple arteries rather than veins taken from the leg is predicting predictor for better long-term survival. So using an artery to perform this bypass guarantee an excellent long-term outcomes. Arteries are used in currently 10% of the overall uh, volume of bypass surgery done in the United States. But if you go to one of those centers that really take coronary with passion, they really care about coronary artery disease, you can have as a patient the best type of treatment for your coronary artery disease that is a bypass done with multiple arteries. Dr. Torgrosa, I've got to ask, I know you do a lot of work minimally invasive. Is this something that can be done using a robot or yeah. other ports? Uh, again, it's an, it, in general, the coronary artery bypass grafting in combination with valve needs what we call a sternotomy approach, so a front entrance. This is always shocking, and I've seen in a lot of my patients to feel almost a feel of frustration. They did a lot of homework to understand which specialist to go for their minimal invasive valve a transcatheter, a robotic mitral, a minimal invasive aortic valve, and suddenly they get discovered that they have coronary artery disease. And the surgeon is telling them they need to have a sternotomy. It's important for patients to know that the concept of offering a sternotomy in a combined procedure of valve and bypass 
is the safest and best long-term outcomes. I love minimal invasive. I'm a bit passionate for robotic surgery, but I always tell my patients that in front of a combined coronary artery disease and valve surgery, the best way to treat this problem is through a conventional sternotomy. And the long-term outcomes are excellent. Yes, the immediate post-op might be a little bit different, but the long-term outcomes are great. There are two other options that can be potentially considered in specialized centers, one of which is considering percutaneous coronary intervention, so placing stent before the heart surgery and perform still the heart surgery in a minimal invasive approach. This is safe when the problems on the coronary artery are not in the major critical portion of the coronary trees. They are not at the root of the trees that brings blood to all of the, of the heart. The second important thing is the combination of a robotic bypass and a robotic mitral valve are very anecdotal. So it's a very few cases and very few circumstances in which we can imagine that that should be done. The standard and most appropriate way is a full sternotomy, a standard approach to guarantee excellent long term. Well, Jeremy, I hope that helped you. And Dr. Tora Gross, on behalf of the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, patients all over the world, thanks to you for everything you're doing at Mainline Health in Wynwood, Pennsylvania. Thanks so much for being with me today. Thank you so much. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.